Good. Yes, it's working. Good evening and welcome to Beery Chats. The Irish are coming. Um, this is the penultimate, or this is the last episode of 2016 um, in association with Island Craft Beers. We are lucky to have Matthew Dick from Boundary Brewing joining us tonight. So say hi, Matthew. Hi. Looking like Emperor <laughs> Palpatine there. Um, <laughs> we're also joined by uh, Colin from Island Craft Beers and Cormac from Honest Brew. So both could say hi, gents. Hello. Hey. How are you doing? And we are delighted to welcome our good friend Martin from the Opinions Podcast uh, to join us for another kind of blogger point of view on the two boundary beers we're going to taste tonight and just have a chat and see he's recently been to Ireland and um, see what kind of his thoughts are, are were on his trip over here. Um, but I suppose we'll start with the introductions um, of who we are. We obviously know who we are. Um, so Colin, maybe just a couple of elevator pitch of who you are and what you guys do. Yeah, sure. It's, so I'm um, I'm Colin Brannigan. Uh, I'm the marketing director for Ireland Craft Beers, and um, Ireland Craft Beers uh, are we started with the goal, uh, and a, a, I suppose it's our vision, um, to become the number one uh, broker of Irish as a whole, and, and bring them globally, and make them accessible globally. Uh, through strategic partnerships and uh, um, targeted distribution channels. So um, that's basically uh, craft beers in a nutshell. Excellent. Uh, Karmic, give us a bit of an elevator pitch on yourself as well. Uh, yeah, um, I suppose <laughs> official title is probably something, it's operations coordinator on us, Brew, but basically that just means uh, we do a lot of the, we do, we go to a lot of beer festivals, uh, we buy a lot of beer. <laughs> Um, no, it, I do a lot of the sourcing of the breweries, uh, especially new breweries, um, coordinating with sort of the existing breweries, just finding the best beer, basically. Our, our company is an online retailer, um, so we're always trying to find basically the beers you won't find locally, stuff you won't find on the high street. So it's always always just a, a case of just working with the best breweries and, and trying to give the consumer um, what they want, sometimes even before they know they want it. So, yeah, yeah. That's the difficulty. And Martin, uh, just a little bit about yourself, mate. Uh, I don't know if you can, st can you still see and hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, disappeared there for a minute. Um, oh, I'm a, a, a blogger who's recently started to do a bit of podcasting with uh, Beer O'Clock Show Steve and created the new show opinions which um as a couple a couple of those we've done um, some beers from craft beers of ireland already uh which we've done a couple of monthly shows on that as well um and uh yeah as you say obviously i went to went to dublin in november for a bit so there was, but there was a few beery things happened as well uh, and that, that's it really for me in a nutshell blogger podcaster beer enthusiast functioning alcoholic that's the Thank one we you. all forget. Thank uh, you very much, Wayne. <laughs> I'm only speaking from my own point of view, of course. Uh, Matthew, um, obviously introduce us, introduce yourself. Um, but what beer are we drinking first? And tell us about this. Okay, I'm Matthew Dick, which is a really unfortunate last name. Um, <laughs> Co-founder, brewer, um, Mashton Digger, Barrel Wrangler at Boundary, where a cooperative brewery started. Boy, nearly two years ago now. I've uh, been plodding along for, for about 18 months brewing. Uh, so tonight we're starting with uh, Push and Pull. Push and Pull is our rotational 5.5% IPA series. Our core IPA is 7%. It's a little more cakey, marmalade-y, a um, little more fully bodied. This is drier, lighter, more bitter, more hops. Um, actually, it's not more hops. It's the same amount of hops used differently, really. Uh, but this one is uh, called All the Hops. It's about six weeks old. Um, so good, we're drinking it now. Um, and the story with this one is we've been really small and uh, didn't know what I was doing when I started. Don't tell anybody. And so we didn't have any hop contracts. We couldn't get contracts for the hops we wanted. And so some friendly brewers um, from the south of Ireland picked us up with the hops we wanted. And the first day I got them, uh, about three months ago I made this. So this is an IPA with uh, Chinook, uh, Amarillo, Mandarina, Bavaria, Simcoe, Citra, Mosaic, and Bit Secret. So, so I, I, I yeah, <laughs> just, just got a bit excited when the hops came. Excellent. And what kind of size um, brewery do you have in Belfast? We have a fucking small one. Uh, we have like a 400 litre brewery, so we brew twice a day when we brew. 
usually three times a week. And we're about to put in a 20 hex, so 20, 100, 2,000 liters. So it's about six times the size, give or take, it's 20, 25 hex. Um, That's some scale up from what you're brewing on at the moment. Yeah, it'll be good to get rid of the double brew days. Let me see my family, two young boys. So that'll, that'll be nice. You'll be finding excuses to brew longer, I'd say. No, no. It's all about the passion. It's all about the passion. So, um, Karmic, how long have you guys been uh, selling the Irish beers? I know on your website, I think I saw White Hag and Metal Man and a couple of yeah. others on there recently. Um, I think I think I've been looking at it for ages, and I'd, I'd even looked at the import ourselves. Um, but it's just trying to find the time to do it. So I think when I was I was actually having a conversation with someone, they said that they had met uh, Shane, who's a, a member of the of the the Arden Craft Beers team. They met him in a pub, uh, like where all good things come from. And uh, he was talking about uh, bringing in some Irish beers. So I said, look, you know, put me in touch with him. So. Uh, gave a buzz and and it was probably twelve months ago now at this stage so so it was really good and I and I know known that some of them were there for years like blacks and eight degrees especially I knew that they you know sh should be getting out of the the UK or getting into the UK sorry um, so yeah it's been about twelve months and and we've grown and grown I think probably any given time we probably have almost a dozen different beers and we kind of we cherry pick which ones we kind of want and and. You try and take as many as we can. So yeah, it's been going really well. We've had a great reaction to them so far. So yeah, yeah, it's been good. Surprise reaction from a lot of people, which is always nice to see. So I, I first yeah. met Shane in a pub too. So yeah, that's it. You should just stay in the pub. He all the business done. You know? <laughs> Don't tell him that. I think we met them at the festival. Yeah, I think we met that's them like in Brewdog. That's like a big pub, basically. That's just one big pub. Yeah, yeah a festival is just a big pub. I think we met the lads in Brewdog for the first time. Was it before All Tech last year? Oh, I can't, uh, see if I can't remember. If yeah, I think it could have been, yeah. Uh, the last memories. year was the second time we were at it, so we might have met before that. And yeah, we de we've we um, bumped into each other, give names, and it's got beer, or beer um, in it anyway. And the excuse. So, um, <laughs> thoughts on the beers then? Martin, what do you think? Very fruity and very drinkable. I was hoping you weren't going to ask, so I could just carry on <laughs> <laughs> drinking it. Now I've had to stop and talk. I didn't realize, I didn't realize this was part of the plan. I thought you just sent me beer and I could just drink it away. But it is Since when were you shy? <laughs> we're sending you a um, bill too. Be in the post. I thought that, I, I, that's in the post as well. So that, that can go to the neighbour. <laughs> <laughs> they, they won't mind paying it, I'm sure. No, they'll be fine. It, I, it's re, it's quite it's very smooth. It's got I find it's got quite a dry finish as well. But yeah. not so not so dry you lose anything it makes you just want to go back and sip a bit more again mm. yeah cool. we're trying to make it dry without making it too thin so that's good well, it's got it's got quite a thick mouthfeel actually now you yeah. say it as well it's um it, it's a very drinkable what is it five and a half yeah 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 it's it's it's, it's practically sessionable these days um but i find it a very drinkable beer very good um what malts do you use in it, Matt? This one's just, uh, we use mainly Simpsons. They're okay. uh, from UK, and uh, we use extra peel. It's really just all extra peel with a little bit of acidulated malt. We drop the pH a wee bit, and basically doing that all that, yeah. Let the pops, let the hops pop a little bit more. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's it, just the two. Uh, maybe do a touch of wheat for the head retention. Where do you get your malts from? Are they? Are they? We just get it directly from them. So I, I was quite lucky. They're they're really the best in my opinion. They, they have a long waiting list to mm. get malt from Simpsons, especially for an account like us. They're so small. They're whiskey, I, whiskey malt, isn't it? They do all kinds. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if they do whiskey. But um, <clears throat> I just happened to send them an email from my brew butter account, my last job, which is mm. this robot that brews beer, and the guy that owns Simpsons. Um, called me he's like why the hell do you want this amount of malt for that little thing and what is that little thing and he had just been in texas all summer and so had i so we chatted for like an hour and then at the end i just chanced my arm and asked him for an account he said yeah so it's quite lucky and do you find the the hops now you mentioned when you started out you kind of didn't have mm -hmm. much contract or look and getting the hops you wanted is that improved for you now you've been established a while or? yeah we're, we're laughing now we're up to the level of production where we can well, it's partly the level of production, but it's partly the amount of hops we've into our beers, which is 
probably too much. Mexico beer is really expensive. Um, <clears throat> that we yeah, we get our minimum order meets the meets the requirement. So we're loving it. Life right now, I got all we want. Have you ever um, tried to use the Irish malts, Matt? No, we've just Simpsons to me are the best. So um, they're expensive. We could get cheaper, but we're happy with the final product. Um, Simpsons customer service and care, everything is brilliant. So yeah, I have no reason to, to experiment or change with that. I like I like to keep some of the variables the same. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the malt is such a critical component, and and I know like one or two breweries I've spoke to down here have have experimented with various uh, MCI. Uh, Lochrans and a few others, but th I think once they kind of get comfortable and familiar with what a malt does and the efficiency and everything, they're happy to stick with it unless they're proven otherwise. That, that I think it's in the nature to give it a go and see what happens. Um, but like you'll always go back to the one that produces the best results, and obviously that's what you want. You want to produce, I would imagine anyway, the best beer you can uh, yeah. as possible. Like in in terms of. And, and what's the reception been like for you up in Belfast? Obviously, you're slightly different as Brook Boundary is a cooperative brewery, so you're mm -hmm. owned by your members. Uh, and you yeah. recently did a, a large fundraising exercise that's obviously enabled you to upgrade your brew kit. So what, what makes, what's the reception like up there, and what makes Boundary different to your average brewery? Mm -hmm. uh, reception up here in like the market we're aiming at, which is like the beer geek, higher end, everyone on this conversation kind of market has been great. Um, so the, the good independent off licenses and bars, the better restaurants uh, have been loving us. Um, but it's a very, very, very small market up here. But we knew that when we started, so that's fine. We've pretty much been exporting since we started. Is it um, is it tied in Belfast? Is that what the pubs? Is that how they hold on to it in Belfast? Yeah, so Northern Ireland's the most tied market in Europe for draft. Um, yeah, it's like 94, 96 percent of all taps in the country are tied to. Yeah. Big fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> and is Diageo the main culprit, is it? It's Diageo and Hannigan. Yeah. Oh, someone didn't put the phone on silence. I think that was uh, yours. Uh, I accidentally put <laughs> That was me, actually. Well, like, yeah. that, that's life, and we'd love to change that one day eventually, but we knew that was yeah. the case when we started, so yeah. our business plan just worked around that. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. In the south of Ireland, Matt? Say it again? Do you have uh, any distribution in the south of Ireland? Yeah, we've been in the south maybe for about a quarter and a half uh, with Northeast, so they're a Galway-based distributor too. Um, they came to us, and that's always a good sign as a brewery. It's ideal, really. So I've been plodding along a wee bit down there, trying to grow that over the next quarter or two. So we could see you some tap takeover events down here soon. Yeah, I'm doing. Uh, I'm actually in Galway on Monday and Tuesday to brew at Galway Bay, and then I'm with Declan Yellow Belly in February another collab so we'll probably do something after that for both of those we oh, have why, just why had our first question in Whoa. Just our, our first question is just in and it's actually from uh steve at uh, beer pop pods have murky beers reached ireland yet and what did the <laughs> panel think of them <laughs> um not quite although this is uh this is our uh new england ipa called forever ago Spoiler alert, it doesn't get released the next week. Uh, you guys were like three days too early to get any. So sorry. Damn you, Colin. Damn it. <laughs> I'll send you some anyway, because we got like five IPAs at the minute. Um, I mean, it, it, no, not, not really is the answer. Mm, the best we get is maybe like the cloud water stuff or some of the brew by numbers are uh, maybe on the murkier end. But in fairness, yeah. Um, the intentionally murky, I don't know if we get much of that up in the north. Yeah, Galway Bay have had a small batch of a uh, New England Pale Ale yeah. I had any, which it, was really good. But, yeah, it was brilliant. Um, I think, and Trouble Brewing, I think, had a, a, an East Coast IPA as well, but it wasn't as murky as I, I had any, and definitely not as murky as some of the Cloudwater Dippers we've had. Um, but I believe version 10 is meant to be an absolute murk fest from the few pictures I've seen online. Yeah, I might get that confused good. with version 9. I can never no, remember. No, I, I think version 10 is supposed to be. I mean, that's what's prompted Steve to uh, ask the question because we're, we're seeing a lot of murk in the UK at the moment. It seems to be a thing. Intentional murk, yeah. yeah. It feels like it's intentional, although I do think that there was a recent blog discussion with Cloudwater about the V10, and I think they were saying they actually don't know why this one's come out so cloudy. Huh. Cool. So, actually, from yeah. their point of view, I'm not sure it was 
deliberate, but I think a few others it feels like it is. It's great mm. to hear uh, Cloud Water say we don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened that way. I don't know if I should say. I had some V9 and I had it in the brewery in Cloudwater, and they were all like a lot of the staff, the staff rise when it came out of the came out of the tap or whatever. They've got a little bar in the in the brewery, and it was this crystal clear like lager basically. And they were like, I don't know, someone in the brewery must have known it was going to come out like that. But yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. That's so yeah. reassuring. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes everyone else feel a bit better, doesn't it? Then about how things are going in general. Um, just I suppose, Matt. Um, uh, I'd like, be interested to get your opinion on this, and obviously Colin and Karmic as well, in terms of um, dealing with distributors from a brewery's point of view, and from distributors' point of view, dealing with breweries. Like, what are the kind of, what do you think kind of makes a successful uh, partnership there? And that, this question is from Declan, so you can oh, thank him for that. Oh, there he one. goes. He he's, started. He's getting his. Is that our Declan? Yeah. Our Declan, yeah. That's, that's, not, one the, that's not one of the questions I gave him. What's he doing? Yeah, uh, well, he's on road, man. <laughs> you couldn't rely on him to stick to the script. Dude. Um, I, yeah. I think, um, I guess I'll go first because I just started. Uh, it depends on your business model, but if you are using distributors, a good distributor is worth their weight in gold. Like a distributor that works with you, that communicates, that comes closer over their projections, um, that doesn't just keep adding to their portfolio, is the brewer's dream. I think probably where the distributor's nightmare where we have five, six or more new beers every month. That's got to be a pain in the ass, but I'll, I'll let them speak to that. I think it's a where the warehouse is more of a pain in the ass for than anything. <laughs> I get a lot of distributors just forward me emails from warehouses saying, can you answer this or deal with this or apologize? <laughs> I'm putting the same label on five yeah. different <laughs> Yeah. What, do you, what do you think yourself, Colin? Um, well, like uh, for us, like it, it'll, obviously working with the right brewery, uh, and like obviously working with Matt, he's very on it. He's uh, he's a good communication channel with him, and uh, it all comes down to pricing, really, uh, when it comes to dis distribution. Because um, at the end of the day, like that's what the end goal is for both parties. Um, so. Yeah, like uh, the most important thing is just both parties getting the price right from the get-go and um, working on it from there. Excellent. Yeah, because obviously it, it all filter into the end price for the consumer, and I, I suppose there are one or two distributors known around the place for maybe having a bit of a, a heavy margin on on what they charge uh, for bringing beers in and things. Um, Declan continues to. <laughs> Uh, stir things up. I have a feeling that this is a spoon-fed question. Um, cans as a packaging method. <laughs> I wanted to ask that one. <laughs> we all love cans. We are fans of cans in this household. We're we're probably looking. We're probably looking at almost sixty percent cans now at certain stages. Like ah. Our range is changing constantly, but um, yeah, we're we're looking at it now. And some beers, like Imperial Stouts and stuff, are still coming in in in. In bottles but the vast majority of hoppy beers are coming in in uh, cans now so um, and and the four four five five can now we're gonna I think we're gonna see a big increase in those in the next sort of 12 months as well so so yeah, yeah we're kind of going in the direction that America's been for kind of the past two years I think can I can I change your mind uh, no. go on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so our first year was pretty good I uh, had a good first year um, we're starting to get uh, mm. requests for beer outside and I and we couldn't really, we were using like cooperative members of package on this manual gravity fed system, which was good, but just, there's no way we could scale it. And uh, uh, so we did a second, second crowd. Second crowd. We did a second did crowd. Did a second crowd. Is that echoing? That echoing? That's me. Yeah, the unplugged. Yeah, the unplugged. Yeah, the unplugged. No. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. There we go. There we go. Uh, so we did a second raise. Second raise. And uh, I wanted a reason not, reason to, get not the to get a machine. Kind of machine. And so started looking into, look into it. Basically, it came down to the lower end, lower end, end machines, machines compared to the lower end bottling and machines. And machines. You can only afford the lower end, which were tiny. tiny. Uh, uh, the lower end kind of machines are shit. Machines are shit. Yeah. They're so bad. They're so bad. Somebody's headphones. They dissolve oxygen. They dissolve oxygen. Um, the purging. Purging. 
the, the, the in the heads in the heads here software software just doesn't happen on those machines. machines and so you see a lot, so of, you see a lot of smaller smaller these moving the cans moving the cans it's better for the beer and the truth is it's not but it's a market but it's a market and I let them sell and let them sell more beer I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna feed back to you I'm gonna feed back to you I'm gonna feed back I assume everyone's yeah, headphones had to put there. Yeah, I can hear everyone. I was getting loads of feedback on me. Yeah, I'm getting a uh, uh, echo looking like feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Right. That was my rant too. <laughs> Um, do you know what? I, I, I completely agree with you on a lot of that because um, I've had a few conversations with different brewers and I was even talking to founders and, and they were saying that they invested a lot of money in a bottling machine that they were finding was, putting, was producing less oxygen levels than the cans were producing. And that's founders who have two very high-tech pieces of machinery yeah. um, and their tests were shown that it was actually less oxygen in the bottles than there were in the cans. So, um, yeah. Go on some of the... Some of the smaller breweries go and try their bottles compared to their cans, blind test their hoppy beers, yeah. and they'll only be one winner. Yeah. Well, even, even, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was going to say, uh, I, I think it depends on the type of beer as well, doesn't it? Yeah, that's uh, true. There was, an, there was an interesting um, post or tweet that I saw where someone was saying about, you know, when you do have, say, when you start putting live, live beers into a can, you can't see, so you guys have sediment in your in your beer, so it's still a conditioned product. At least I can judge when I finish pouring it. If you're pouring it out of a can, you're going to struggle a bit more. Yeah. So I think I think it does depend on the type of beer that you, you're going to put in a can, and also who is who's canning it and what they're using. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we get a lot of cans. <laughs> uh, I know myself. I know myself. I've had bad cans, like oxidized bad cans. Mm. But um, yeah, it's, it seems to be seems to be the. Sh so. The oh. The feedback seems to be seems to be happening. No, I've turned my mic turned my mic off. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? I blame Google. Yeah. So, so far, so far, it's been Wayne's phone that's gone off. It's it's, it's Wayne's feedback. Just Colin, you Colin. must be close enough to the Google offices. You could go in and say something. Hi, hi, yeah. The problem I have is like I have is like. Oh, Obviously, people are free to package their beer in machines that they want to, but the thing that pisses me off is when they, they lie and say it's better for the beer when the lower end canning machines aren't. No, yeah. And they're not better for the environment, too. They say that, but do a bit of research and box out money and what that does to get the aluminium to make the cans. That's not exactly environmentally friendly. Like, I, I want to go to cans, and we did the boundary branding with one eye on cans eventually, but until we can afford a, a sexy, really, really good one, we'll stay with the folding machine. From our point of view, it makes perfect sense. Transport, and they're about half the weight, like a packaged beer and bottle is twice, almost twice the weight of a can, you know? So from you a seal, You can seal, get three cans in one thing as well, can you? You can get them in uh, these little cardboard tubes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they look really nice. You should get, they're the perfect Christmas gift. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a howler as well, by the way. Don't be a hard thing, then. You should patent that. <laughs> <laughs> I should stop. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> um, yeah, I think from, yeah, marketing. But marketing, people buy beer with their eyes as well, you know? There's a huge canvas. When you have a can, you've got so much, like, you've just got a canvas to play with. You haven't got any dead space on the product. And I think, yeah, people are trying to sell their beer, and it makes sense for them. And I think, you know, the labels do look better on cans. And at the end of the day, you're on a shelf. And you're competing with all these other breweries who are doing similar things to you, you know, I think, I don't know. And they fit so nicely into a handbag for a bus or a train. Exactly, yeah. Or on the tube, yeah. yeah. You can bring them to the beach, which is really important in Ireland too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or hiking the mountains, you know, when you go up those mountains, Croke Patrick or whatever. You know? yeah. Bare feet, it has to be bare feet. Bare feet with a can of, uh, 
or whoever it is. I'm trying to think of a can be a rascals. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how's everyone getting on? I'm assuming I'll nearly finish the beer. Or oh, half mine's done. I'm on a stout already. I'm on a stout too. Yeah, I must say I really enjoyed the all the hops now, I must say. Yeah, I've got some, uh, we've got other ones. Very good. More fresh. I was being all polite and waiting. <laughs> I put I put it off camera just in case that wasn't that good or I don't know. <laughs> it could be damned. Do we have any final thoughts though on the on the first beer? Colin, what do you think of the first one? Awesome. Uh very smooth. Um but that's actually the first time I've tasted that uh, all the hops, so um, I'm, I think it's. I thought it was very nice. Now uh, I could, you could have a, you could have definitely have a few of them, and yeah. uh, in one sitting, like for sure. Yeah, I really enjoyed it too. I think there's no compromise in it either. You know, there's uh, we get a lot of beer obviously into the office, and we're always looking for beers that are sort of brewing that sort of full hoppy flavour. It's kind of what a lot of consumers expect now. Is like, mm -hmm. and for five and a half percent, for that to have so much flavour is 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 wonderful. You know, so yeah, yeah. It'd be smashing in the can. Nah, yeah, I agree. I agree. It would. Or or a bag in a box, perhaps. <laughs> That's maybe the next one. Was well, it? It's the wine you get in the box, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's much right. Give it five years, bag in a box. You'd be sat on a park bench with a five litre bag in a box. Of Lambic. Double IPA. Mm. Oh, we have, I've, I've seen those. They make those in Belgium, Lambics in Belgium. Oh, I know, I, I get them all the time. Yeah, yeah, they're good value. <laughs> have we lost Martin? I think he's just stepped away for a second. I think he maybe came back in. He dropped out, but. Well, oh. I, I'm, here, I'm here. I don't know what happened, though. Are you eating <laughs> spaghetti again? No, no, no. I'm saving that last lot. Did you turn off your camera? It's probably for no. the best. I'm not sure it's on yet either. Oh, hang on. According to this, your camera's turned off. Yeah, yeah. Your, your video camera this, thing. This wouldn't happen with Skype. This wouldn't have happened with Skype. Oh. Oh, that's really helpful, Matt. Thanks. But we'd, <laughs> we'd all be paying for it. So, so tell us about the Skype then. So the Skype... So my previous job at Brewbot, I got to basically brew on like a 20, 30 liter automated uh, kit for a year, like I guess professional homebrew or something. I got to brew a couple of times a week at least. Um, and the two main recipes I worked on were the use of hops and IPAs and this. Um, so it's an export stout. It's a shit ton of brown malt, which gives it kind of a roasty, astringent coffee rather than the sweet, more imperial style. Um, I definitely just trying to copy something like the kernels, because I think it's perfect. Um, it's won us the, the good awards. Don't don't start me on beer awards. It's another question. I'll rant about um, but it's, yeah, it's won. Yeah, it's won some good legitimate awards. And uh, yeah, love it. Be good in cask, except we haven't done much cask yet. So you were obviously over at Indyman uh, back in October and you were in Cork, I think, as well. Well, you were in Cork. I, I saw you in both places. But the Bakewell Stout. Yeah, the Sour Bake. Sour Bake, mm -hmm. sour <laughs> that was... Yeah, yeah. We, just bought, we, just, we just bottled some of that last week for Christmas in 750 mils. So Lovely. There's another I'll send you on that picture. You can use that for any promotional advertisement you want. I forgot about that. Yeah, we had a good picture of you trying that, didn't you? I drank about half a keg of that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just, just, just buy, just buy some next, bottles, so. Cormac. It's fine. Yeah. But yeah, so that was good. So that was the first ever beer we did. That's our beer. We um, did that in March 15. And it was in... Uh, yeah, March 15, it was in... Pinot Noir bars in for about 18 months with all kinds of bacteria. Nice. So yeah, it's, it's pretty young. So what do the next six to 12 months hold for Boundary in terms of <clears throat> export plans, collaborations, traveling overseas? Because obviously uh, the, br the branding is, is really cool. I'm assuming it's a local artist up there who does that for you, is it? Yeah, the art is um, my friend John Robinson. He's a local Belfast artist I've known since we were kids. Uh, he is, his art studio is in the brewery, actually. So we swap him studio space for uh, for work, basically. Swap him rent for work. So he doesn't pay us and we don't pay him. And uh, he and his ass, because he does a new painting for every kind of beer that we do, which is a lot. 
Um, so yeah, it's fun. Gets free beer out of it as well, I assume. He does. He helps himself. I don't think he knows that I know, but I do, and he does. <laughs> So, Colin, your partner in crime, Shane, um, wants to know, Matt, do you think Boundary are bound for USA in 2017? Uh, I would say that's up to Shane, yeah. <laughs> Is he the one who went off to America a couple of weeks ago? That was oh, Liam. Uh, Liam went, to, went on a trip to Boston uh, last month, or, um, yeah, in November. Yeah. Went to Boston and Oregon, so uh, he, he had a bit of a journey over up. there. Jamie Little Hacker. So obviously, he's obviously getting too much margin. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who's paying for that trip to Boston? <laughs> no, so, so 2000, 2017 is uh, going more in the continental Europe and into the east coast of the States. Yeah, so uh, the next quarter will, will be in the States for sure. Kind of like a Paddy's Day launch. And then three to four at least continental countries. And then... Um, at the start of January, I'm going to the States to do some collabs. Some will be launched around our March, East Coast launch. And then uh, February, go to Belgium, because I just brewed with Albina in Belgium to pour that. And uh, then March, go back to the States. And then April, sleep. Um, yeah, so, so it's a good dog. Unexpected to call it to the dog. You can't get any more like rough and ready than this. This is absolutely insane. Who calls it half Well, speak yeah. to the devil. Hold on. Christmas carols. Christmas carols. It's the what? Eighth of seventh of December. So uh, we're swapping rooms. Hold on. You want to tour the house? <laughs> this like gonna be craft brewers. <laughs> this is my mansion. Yeah, I get from a massive salary. Could that? Could that be an ongoing podcast, which is just craft brewers cribs? <laughs> we should, we should. Totally You're onto something that. there, I think. Cormac. Light grossman totally through the keyhole. Yeah. I'm just thinking the most hipster place I can sit. Probably. I've got a. I've, I've got, got a. Boot I've got a for the telly. In front of I've literally got a fixie bike behind me. It's actually not a fixie bike. Thank God. I think it's. I think it's a crowd-funded advertising bike. I'm gonna sit in front of my Jimmy Oliver cookbooks. Me and Sit. me and Joe go way back. Hey, yeah, so I think Janice has another question from <laughs> Twitter. Like, she... Yeah, so um, Andrew Patterson wants to know how's the lobbying of the Northern, Northern Iron licensing laws going? That's for Matt. That's obviously for Matt. We seem so I bad. want member specials in Glasgow. We've lost Matt. Hmm. So obviously, we'll Matt, come back to that one. We'll come back to Matt. You were in you were in Dublin recently. Um, obviously, what kind of beer highlights did you have um, from your visit? Obviously, I know you probably drank a lot of Guinness with your friends and everything. But you, what bars did you visit? I know I gave you one or two recommendations. Yeah, you uh, you very kindly uh, set up a few for me. Uh, obviously, you did do the Guinness. Uh, went over to the Open Gate. Uh, Brewery, the part, the part where they do like some events and do the a few of the special beers, etc. That was nice, lovely space in there. Uh, we went to a couple of the Galway Bay bars, um, Brew Dock, which was brilliant. Loved that one. That was only Yay! a minute, and that was a minute's walk away from the hotel if you knew how to get there, or five minutes via Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, for you. Yeah. And uh, the uh, the we. Basically lined up, did all the uh, the paddles and stuff from uh, Galway Bay while we were in there. Um, their, their dipper, their West Coast dipper, West Coast IPA. Uh, that was absolutely delicious, that was. Really enjoyed that. Uh, I was a little bit, I think I've mentioned this on the, the Opinions podcast, a little bit disappointed about the Guinness. I didn't feel that was that much different to what I'd get over here. Mm. And I've been working on a 30-year myth Oh, it was shit over there, too. Guinness in Ireland. That's because he didn't try Beamish. That's where you should have been. Yeah. I didn't, see falls anywhere. I didn't see any of it. That, the only thing I saw of, other than the Galway Bay stuff was Guinness. That's Dublin for you. Guinness That's over what, Dublin. It is slowly getting better, though. Um, in fairness, Dublin, it, there is one or two decent bars opening up that are offering a decent range and they might also cater for the macro crowd, which I think 
I, I think it, it makes sense for a business. You don't want to exclude potential customers um, straight off the bat by not offering. Like if you're out in a group of mates and 10 of you are out and... Ah, uh, fuck a macro crowd. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm also to drink it in one place. I'm so <laughs> yeah, we, but I am, from, I am from Cork, so it wasn't just... <laughs> Bad, I wasn't some person over in London, bad mouth for that reason. Now, you need the macro as well. I mean, some of my friends drink the, the standard macro stuff. So having uh, a bit of both in one place is ideal when I'm out with certain groups of friends anyway. Yeah. Um, I think that's... So I, I'm quite happy with that. That's okay, because we were on a night out recently and Wayne was drinking Guinness. So what? Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> what? Be better than the craft beer that was on auction. I'm going to give you my number and I will like... Yeah, I have to make some... I will deliver place, you some extra... Uh, which, again, again, it's Catesby, which is over well, the river. I don't think I'm drinking Guinness again after drinking that. Yeah, you have a Smithwick's Pale Ale after that? <laughs> uh, and I... Guinness Nitro IPA, dude. Nasty. Oh, uh, I tried that. <laughs> that Guinness was as bad as you think. Yeah, you're out of control. It was, was the control. least favourite beer of the weekend. <laughs> the fuck the did you expect? IPA. <laughs> Nitro IPA works so well. I, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this from some of my. Uh, uh, I love. I love friends. a preface like that. But. Yeah, but there's something <laughs> lovely about going to a pub that's like I want to call it a mixed crowd, like we're some sort of segregated <laughs> society. But, um, Special. I, I like a mixed crowd where you have a whole re like you have a bar and you have some Guinness taps and you maybe have a Heineken tap and you also have some sours and some IPAs and so there's, a, there's pubs in Dublin where you can go like Stag's Head for example you can have a White Hag sour on draft or it's one of the most Guinness pubs you'll ever walk into you know like and it means that the crowd you get diversity in the crowd yeah, you don't cool. get a lot of people sort of staring down at their uh, at their books you know ticking off things you know it's it's a nice mixed crowd yeah I agree um, Janice had a question Matt before you kind of dropped out there for a second yeah it turns out there's no signal in my uh um, what was it? Well, you tell me. You're the one I have a question as well. Whenever after you, Thomas. Um, this was from Anne. My Twitter doesn't seem to be working. How's the lobbying of the Northern Ireland licensing laws going? I want um, member specials in Glasgow, and that's from Andrew Patterson. So once every quarter or so, we sell beers uh, to members in Northern Ireland, and if they're in Northern Ireland. They're the only ones that get them, um, but we can only sell to them in Northern Ireland. Um, so that's where that question comes from. They're a member of our cooperative. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's good. It's it's hard to say. Like anything with Stormont or politics anywhere, it's taken a while. Um, it seems to all be making the same noises. We're maybe just a couple of months ahead of the site and the stuff that's starting to happen there. Um, but I. I in a way, I actually think it's a wee bit irrelevant because the issue really is the tide mm. situation. It's not the licenses because if, if all the breweries in the north could sell tomorrow, we've still got the most tide market in Europe. And that's illegal probably if it was pushed because it's only competitive and only in Northern Ireland is competition illegal. Uh, but <laughs> are, the, are, the rulings, are the rulings from England to do with tide pubs, do they not affect Northern Ireland? No, you? so I've been... So I've, Take on legal advice on it and been told if I went to Brussels with it, if you had big enough balls and deep enough pockets, yeah, that it might be interesting. But then Brexit, so. yeah. yeah, you're better off just waiting for. Well, um, maybe not. I mean, we'll see. But I, the licensing is what it is. But it's not the real issue. I don't think. I think. Yeah. That that's why Barnsley hasn't spent too much time specifically on it, because um, the other bridge are doing a great job on it. But that's not the issue. Hmm. I think. Oh. Colin, fire away. Matt, are you like to talk about your um, your club in the States? Yeah, so um, in January I'm going to Colorado, the brew of Breckenridge. We're doing, I probably shouldn't say what we're doing because it's their home turf, so it's up to them to announce. And then I'm going to California to brew um, with Tahoe Mountain, who are brewery Lake Tahoe, close to where I live with my wife. Do only sours, only barley, it's mixed. Um, Fermentations, and then hopefully with Drake's, who are a brewery in the Bay Area. You're quite a big growing regional brewery. You just do yeah. fantastic stuff with hops. So um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I'm still in trouble at home for going to America on my own. But... I was just going to say, <laughs> how did you get? <laughs> how, how, how are you getting away with that? Uh, I haven't necessarily got away with it. <laughs> 
Matt sleeping in the spare room. Yeah, yeah, a lot of lot of dishes to wash. So with you going over there, does that mean that those breweries would, might come over to you then and do a collab over here? Maybe, yeah. I mean, I'd love to. Uh, Tahoe Mountain are, are pretty small, um, but yes, yeah, that that'll be class. That's what I, I always try to do that with the collabs we've done. We've done a lot of collabs, but up to now they've all been kind of. UK and Ireland based, so it's easy to have them here or go back to them once they've brewed at home. Mm. But yeah, I mean, if they're watching because they're weird and watching this, uh, they're definitely welcome to come to Belfast and brew a beer. <laughs> um, and your tap room's open every weekend, is it? To the end of the year, yeah, every Friday, Saturday, 4 to 11. Come to the only bar in the country that cleans their lines and serves good beer. So does that mean then the apocalypse happens on the 31st and it doesn't happen anymore then from January? Well, well yeah, we're not doing the 31st either because we realised we only did our licence till 11pm because we didn't want to piss off our residents and so there's no point doing a new year Yeah, if you're open till 11, so 30th. Um, no, we'll take a break in January and then see where we are. Oh, fair enough. So you guys are able to apply for a, a licence to do that kind of thing. Like That's not an option down here. Yeah, it's a, no, it's not an option down there. Yeah, you just yeah. have to have uh, friends in the industry and use your brains up here. Um, we've been doing the monthly for about a year, maybe, give or take. And I kind of just wanted to try an experiment to see what the market's like in the north for um, hipster stemmed third pint pours only of all kinds of crazy beers that didn't have any Diageo uh -huh. on top because no one else does that. I hope you have nothing but tattoo glasses. Uh, well, yeah, we got a pallet of them ordered and they fucked up the order, so that's why this is blank. It doesn't have the logo on it that it used to. Just can't that's get the staff these days. That's you have an artist in the house. Get him to sort it. <laughs> got a bit of paint daubed on there. Paint, paint it. No, they're fixing it, so that's all that matters. Yeah, I'll just teach him how to engrave glass and he can do the boundary logo on the on. I don't yeah, know you can just, you can just, a yeah, you can just make the glasses. <laughs> Matt, how easy is it to get to your tap room, public public transport? Ah, uh, it's grand. We're um we're only like a mile out of the city centre, so it's fine. Yeah, it's pretty good. That that's like if the licensing laws do change, um, that will be good for us. Like, don't get me wrong, I want them to change and find you to take advantage of that, and there'll be value in that for us. But I don't really think that's the issue with why the market's so shit at home. Is it is it possible that? the kind of general popular the general public is a little bit behind down here like it seems to be like even my dad now will drink like brew have opened a pub in navin and he had no qualms about going in having dinner on sunday and drinking a couple of pints of their beer mm. whereas maybe 24 months ago if i'd have put a craft beer in front of him and said drink that he'd have gone oh god it tastes too much of this or too much of that mm -hmm. do you think it's a case that the general market itself is is maybe like ireland regularly compares itself to where it is on the curve versus the uk as in yeah. england and scotland and the us is it a case of then northern ireland then compares itself on the curve to where ireland and the uk are yeah I mean, maybe yeah. Share, like no, no, maybe. Uh, comparisons like that generally I don't think are helpful. Like no. um, an indie man has had a good panel on, the, well, actually it was a shit panel, but it could have been really good on the state of craft beer in the UK. A really good potential. But Is that the one that turned into Argy Bargy? Talk, yeah, talk about that another time. But um, there's a lot of comparing to America and the need for definition of craft and stuff. And I don't, I don't know that that's really helpful because no. comparisons generally aren't helpful in life. Um, I, th I, think, I think pockets of craft beer where you look to your own sort of community to grow your own industry like I think Manchester is a great example of that mm. you know we we now buy probably equal amounts of beer from Manchester and London almost uh, maybe still a little bit more from London but Manchester just look to themselves and they look to kind of build their own character and their own sort of reputation and and you, you just look to your your own area and try and build that as much as you can I think it's the best way to go about it um, you know that's Belfast would you know, would be the same. You know, I think they should just look to the their own area. You know, it doesn't have to just be the city, but anyway, the the region. You know, um, population is small enough. You know, so probably the whole yeah. region has to be included. So I have a two part question here, actually, from Thomas McCarthy. First part, um, Matt is directed at you. How do you decide on new beers to brew? I go on and tap and see what the highest rated beers are and then just copy them, see if I can get recipes on mine. <laughs> Finally, an honest answer. <laughs> uh, no, I think we'd all be on tap, India. No, that's not true. 
Um, how did I come up with recipes? Uh, loads. Well, some of them are from other beers, yeah. Other beers that I think are brilliant or other beers that I think are terrible but were a good idea or, yeah, like that. Or um, I love cooking, I love food, I love good wine and bread and chocolate and coffee. So the cool kind of colony world. Um, yeah, or so, sometimes actually some of the paintings John does um, then inspire the beer. It's usually the other way around where he does the painting based on the beer, but occasionally by like, gift. I think the one that you're drinking, Cormac, that came from yeah. the label. He did the label for the original export stout. And I was like, that's not the export stout label, but I know the beer that that would suit. So, yeah, but mainly untapped. <laughs> and second part was what are the biggest reasons for the continual growth of craft beer and that's open to the pal I, I personally hate using craft beer as <laughs> yeah but you know what he means though I, I know what he means and it's, it's a perfectly acceptable descriptor it's just I think I think that the term has been bastardized somewhat um like Karmic and Honest Brew had a very frank uh, blog post on their website about the, the the man behind the curtain that the general consumer would not be aware of. And you see it not only in beer, but you see it in Tesco. You see cheeses called Farmville cheese, and that's not fucking seen a farm that, <laughs> any more than I have in the last 20 years, like in fairness. So it's just one of those things where it's, it's, it's a term, it's an adequate descriptor, but I think... For me, the reason I think the, the growth is, is I think the younger generation are generally trying to find something a bit different. They're open to experimentation due to travel, you know, going around the world, emigrating to places like Canada, the US, Australia, and experiencing other cultures and bringing it back and going, well, you know, I, I, my dad drinks Guinness, I don't want to drink Guinness or whatever. Yeah. Um, but that's just my thoughts. Oh, oh, Wayne, by that logic, then my son's going to drink lots of shit. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go full circle. It's he's going to, he's to, going to drink. Castle, he's going to drink Bud Green King IPA. Don't say that. Don't say that. My <laughs> four-year-old know, will take over the world first. My, my, my four-year-old knows what a saison is. I take hope on that. He's going to have a lovely pint of Goose Island IPA. He'll be very happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are we are we talking about the future growth potential <laughs> of craft beer? No, what we're talking about why has it grown and why do we think it will continue to grow uh why do we think it will continue to grow um yeah excellent people like matt firstly obviously because it's it, yeah because it's still a tiny part of the market there's no there's no there's no there's no stopping it you know the the theory that you'll have a pint of boundary ipa we'll probably have a pint well you might um and then you'll go back and to suddenly decide one day you know what i'm going to have a pint of carlsberg because it's a, a, a pound or a euro cheaper, you know, it's just absolute nonsense, you know. Um, you know, it'll never probably hit 90% of the market, but it'll, it'll, you know, it should get to 50% of the market at some stage. Uh, if it's only at 10% at the moment, at the moment, you know, there is no, you know, the logic Not doesn't dictate like that it will. Yeah. Do you, think, oh, do, you think, 50%. Do, you, do you think it could get to 50%? Because I mean, that's, that's a high number. Um, you just have to look at the proliferation of, of craft beer, you know, like, London, you honestly can't open a bar now without having craft beer. At least, at least thirty percent of the taps need to be craft beer, or you're not taken seriously as a bar. Um, no company in their right mind would think of opening a bar without craft beer, and that's the year 2016. You know, we haven't, we've only been doing this for about five years. So, um, you know, same with same with Ireland now. I don't think supermarkets look at their range of beers if there's no craft beer. There, you know, there's no there's no supermarket in Ireland operating without craft beer in it now so so that's a very you know fat rapid acceleration you know yeah i yeah. think it comes back to that the, the the conversation about the the man behind the curtain doesn't it because you know where i work in london in the square mile we have loads of bars which sell craft yeah and I, i'm not going to do the inverted commas with my fingers but they're there and but a lot of that will be uh meantime camden yeah. Those beers I can find fairly easily. Yeah. And to be fair to those beers, compared to some of the other choices I might have, I will go for like Camden Pale Ale often because mm. it's a better option than McCarling or Carlsberg. Mm. Um, but the uh, if you're going to if you're talking about true craft, I think that that would, that would t still take a while because like tomorrow night 
we've got our Christmas party and people are saying, you know, where are you going to go for drinks beforehand? And people are generally going to the places they know and trust and the ones which are close to the venue. Whereas I'm, I've decided I'm going to walk 10 minutes the other way because A, it won't be so busy and B, I can have some hops bef I, before, I get, before I get given becks at the party. I, I, I thought one of the most, one of the most flabbergasty, like I was flabbergasted by this slogan by, by Guinness. What's the slogan for the hoppy lager they make? It's something like brewed with more hops for more flavor. Yeah. They've literally just undermined their entire yeah. brewing philosophy. I was, I was saying that the other night to someone. It's more, more, more bold, more flavor, more hops. Which begs yeah, the, which begs the question, there, isn't it? Begs the question, yeah, what the fuck was the other beer? <laughs> they've just told all their customers, if you drink hoppy beer, you're going to get more flavor. Like they're feeding yeah. craft beer, they're feeding their own customers to craft beer brewers on a silver platter like yeah. Is that the Hot Pass 13? Yeah. That's the one, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think, uh, I think they'll just... They'll always hang on to a few of their drinkers, but most most of the meantime drinkers will will a lot of them will gravitate towards um, better beers like oh, better beers, maybe more full flavored, more adventurous beers like your Beaver Towns and your Wild Beer Co's and stuff. Um, I think they will gravitate towards those after twelve months of drinking meantime pale ale. You know, I, I think it depends whether you're talking about drinking out or at home though as well. Mm. I mean, I, if I'm out in London, it really depends what the if it's a work related do, I'm usually going to get outvoted on interesting beer venues. I'm the same. That's so, why you get those mixed crowds, those goes mixed pubs. That's, that's yeah. Which every so often I do manage to sneak one of those in, and I, you know I'm also quite lucky with London. I've still got quite a lot of really low pubs I can go to as well. Mm. You know, and I do like I do love a pint of cask. So that's I, I have got that as an option. Uh, I'm guessing in, in Ireland that's not always the case how past 13 is your option in ireland dude in a lot of in cases case, i'll stay at home <laughs> yeah, you don't have to drink backs tomorrow you can drink water i want to give you permission yeah that's, I'm, that's I'm, nice of you matt yeah thanks matt i'm, I'm thinking gin and tonic yeah it's all, you know it's all down to the it's all down to the perseverance of the brewery a lot of the time as well like there are certain regions you can go to and you won't find any local beer but i know in if you go down to west cork now for example um blacks down there and eight degrees have pushed their beer um into a lot of pubs like most pubs like you know they're really going for it in terms of expansion um and even traditional what we'd call old man pubs have have either blacks kpa or eight degrees on draft you know it, it, if, if you push you know and you go around and you chat to the publicans they're more more than happy to take local products you know well, that's what we find really good over here is that a lot of the local places do support support the local brewery. Because they're not tied either as well. That's a big difference, I guess. No, like it's only 90-something percent of pubs in Ireland are freehold. Um, mm -hmm. But there is maybe 10% of that 90% is maybe pub groups that have like a large number of pubs like uh, yeah. like Pmax and Cassidy's that fall into that kind of – there are four or five pubs kind <coughs> of uh, size. Um Declan has been causing mischief again, and he's been backed up <laughs> by Shane. Yeah, um, you're partner in crime <laughs> again, Colin. Um, is that Colorado Brewery collaboration part owned by ABV InBev? No, not part, just completely. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a blend, is it a barrel-aged blend of Bud Light? There's no, there's no part about it, no. Yeah, so they got bought uh, end of 15, I think, at Breckenridge. They're one of the biggest breweries in the States. Um, so yeah, it'll be cool to go see a massive brewery and put one of our beers in a can. Can't wait. Cheers, Dak. No shame. No shame. <laughs> Have you no shame. <laughs> Declan, you mad bastard. But anyway, and Shane, no shame. and Shane as well. Dak actually said that to me about fifteen or twenty minutes ago. Oh, so, they're in cahoots. As, as soon as Matthew yeah, mentioned exactly. Breckenridge, oh, they're in cahoots. Shane. That's okay. If you can't be friends with people you disagree with, then well, that keeps things, it, it then. keeps things interesting, doesn't it? In fairness. Um, yeah. I must say, I'm really enjoying the export stout. Seven percent is is perfect for this time of year. Um, uh, is there an imperial version of it? There is. No, it's not. Well, we do imperial stout, but it's completely different. It's sweeter. It's boozier. It's thicker. It's syrupier. It's not dry and oozy like this. It's quite different. Yeah, this so, was really that was really dry. The export stout, but yeah, yeah, it's it's gone. <laughs> that was seven percent. Yeah, that mine, says anything. Mine's nearly gone too. 
Yeah, we need three beers for these. Uh, Work might be damned. I've got the I've cracked open the size on there. Martin has What's three beers. Uh, and we didn't get. Yeah, you got a size on. Colin, you're you get your you should get your beers in on a spoon. <laughs> yeah, on a spoon, brilliant. What's, what's your reasonable <laughs> shipping rates, Ireland uh, comic? Matt, it's Christmas. Oh, you should have thrown an extra one there. I don't even know. Some boxes sneak over to Ireland, but I'm not even sure what the the post rate is. Yeah, I'm pr like I know I was perusing Magic Rock's website recently. I think they're fifteen pound. Um, <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. For about oh. for forty eight cans. Oh wow! So. That's that's the same, uh, and Brewdog now have actually, we've lost Martin again briefly, I think, but Brewdog have actually dropped their price to 15 as well, and Martin's oh. back. Um, but yeah, like, that's the kind of really interesting thing with the with the way the Sterling went, like, a month or two ago, it definitely made a compelling argument for yeah. buying in a couple of cases from the UK, because it was nearly parity at one stage. Mm. Um, but you've, you've got a discount for the next, what is it, for the rest of the month? Oh, we have. Beers? Um, <laughs> I can uh, um, yeah. um, if you go onto the Twitter, we have a, we have a discount for the month on the Irish beers we have. Um, so there's a load of good ones in there. We've sort of handpicked uh, handpicked uh, a few of the ones we really like from the year. We've like we've loved loads of beers, and to be honest, there's loads of beers we can't even get because they they're out of production. They're like they're selling faster than we can buy them. I think that's um, that's the way that the market is. But yeah, we've got some really amazing ones like the. The rascals, the new rascals saison is like an office favorite. So, so that's the Pacific uh, Pacific hop saison. So that's really really good. Um, but yeah, loads there. Check it out. Great little. And site. what's what's the code that people can use? Um, I wish I knew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. We'll, we'll I respect put a link that. in the show notes, guys. Yeah. It's okay. No, I think I I can think I'll find is it. Is it kiss me? I'm Irish. I think it's actually save ten Irish, which sounds like That's a cry for help. Uh, Does that mean that there are ten okay. Irish ready to like die? Save ten Irish. Yeah. It's an SOS message. Yeah, but you could use that. You can buy anything you want in the shop, but anything you put in that's Irish, and you put that code in, it'll give a discount off. So you can put Irish your beer snob. yeah. So you could put your dipper. You can put your dipper ten in there, and you can get a some Irish beer in there and get a discount off it. So, so yeah. And is that Northern Irish and Southern Irish? Well, we just treat Northern Ireland the same as uh, the, 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 whatever, the rest, the, in that, didn't the, rest, the rest of this complicated island. Whatever. Well, yeah. there, was, there were Touchy a few subject, uh, Twitter buddies I wondering if you guys did actually ship to Whoa. the Republic of Ireland, so I think we cleared that up. Yeah, nor, nor east are the distributors down here. Yeah. For us, yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah. at the amount of brewers I speak to who don't know about Boundary down in the Republic. I think because there's... I guess there wasn't distribution until recently. So. No, um, the first small. time I ever had Boundary in a pub was actually when I went to visit Jack and Yellow Belly. <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> when was that? Back in August. Yeah, that's the only time I've actually had Boundary beers in a pub down here. We would have had it at Abbey or down here, right? Okay. Yeah, I would have had it at the festivals and everything, but in a pub down here. It would have been um, with the other belly. Yeah, he stole some kegs from me. That would make a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're best merchant Dex character because he's great in fairness. Love Dex. But uh, no, that's great. So thanks very much, Matt, for joining us this evening. No um, thanks for having me. Obviously, boundarybrewing.coop, is it? C O O P? Like a chicken. Like a chicken is the web address. Um, but obviously, if people are up in Belfast, you have weekly tap rooms till the end of the year, and obviously, hopefully, picking them up back again in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, but you can pick up the beers in Honest Brew, and if you're down south in Ireland, Northeast, distribute them. So get onto your local bottle shop and ask them to get Boundary beers in. Um, I think Martin's back. Um, so just kind of wrapping up, I really enjoyed the export stout. I must say, um, I would love to try that on cask. Yeah, it'd be good. I think. I think it's, it's it kind of lends itself to cask to really well, but then we ended the new debate of sparkler or no sparkler, and I think we give some Ireland craft for Paddy's Day and somewhere in London, but I didn't get to try it. Oh yeah, that was in the Brewdog. I'm sure it was Brewdog. great. I'm sure it was. So <laughs> thanks very much, guys. <laughs> well, I don't. I'm not doubting you, but um, I didn't get to try it myself, so I can't comment. <laughs> Um, so thanks very much guys, thanks to everyone who uh, tweeted in questions and deck for causing all sorts of havoc as he usually does. Um, 
Colin, if you want to just give the web address and Twitter profile it, for Island Craft. Yes. Yeah. yeah, just say uh, if um, you're interested in importing some uh, craft beers from Ireland, just uh, go to um, www.ironcraftbeers.com. And um, Shane and Donald will actually be on the Irish Jam uh, radio station on Friday. Uh, not quite sure of the time on that, but it's probably around lunchtime. So if uh, you're in the London area um, and you listen to the Irish Jam, just tune in. Uh, listen to them doing a live tasting with Keelan. Um, but yeah, other than that, thanks for having me. No worries, Con. Comic. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Honestbrew.com. <laughs> yeah, thanks, <Matt. laughs> I think you'll find it's .co.uk. Uh, you don't know the post? Oh, well, that's a rookie error. Does it redirect to Beerhawk? By any chance, <laughs> it will by probably tomorrow. Yeah, too, too soon. Just no... Sorry, guys. Sorry, Martin. Don't worry. It's only, uh, the big, it's only yeah. one of the biggest companies in the world. It's fine. <laughs> I'm sure they're pretty unlitigious. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, guys. Um, here's the answer if anyone wants to look at any of my, my uh, recent blogs and the last opinion show of the years on uh, the coming Monday where we give our last few golden pints awards. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks very much, guys, for joining us. Um, stay tuned for the next episode of um, Theory Chats, which will be in January now at this stage, and we will announce the brewery and everything shortly. Um, but thanks very much, Matt. Great to chat to you. Uh, hopefully, we'll cross paths soon and be able to have a beer. Um, if not, we'll just have to make our way up to Belfast. Sounds good. Cheers. 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 Cheers, Cheers. 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 Cheers.